It's such an era of like, everybody wants to know about the guy nobody knows about first. Riley Green has that traditional country sound that's so popular right now. And his song, There Was This Girl, launched his booming music career. But Riley's road to success was shocking. From reality TV fame to song controversies, you won't believe the crazy way that Riley got famous. Riley was born in a small Alabama town. His dad played guitar in a local band, and Riley grew up surrounded by country music. He was eight years old when he began playing guitar like his dad. By his teenage years, Riley had started writing country tunes. He also followed in his dad's footsteps by playing in local bands. But Riley also had a crazy hobby like many kids in the South, and he admitted something shocking once about this hobby of his. He was dating a girl in his teen, and one day, Riley said that he was thinking about his hobby, and his mind started drifting off. That's when Riley's girlfriend asked him an unbelievable question. According to Riley, the girl asked him, you're thinking about turkeys, aren't you? Shockingly, Riley admitted that he was. And that's because Riley is passionate about the sport of small game hunting. Depending on the season, Riley still gets licensed to hunt for game, including ducks and turkey. But if that sounds like Riley was a little crazy as a teenager, his mom would agree with you. Apparently, Riley's mom worried about him quite a lot. Riley has even confessed his mom's biggest wish in life. She just wished that he would make it to at least 22. According to Riley's mom, her job would be done if he got to be 22 and was alive and well. These days, Riley is known in Nashville for his love of old country music, but he's confessed that his mom and dad introduced him to plenty of other music. Riley's mom got him into Fleetwood Mac, and his dad told him about the band as well as 1990s country artists. One other person in Riley's life was instrumental in his music career. That person is Buford Green, who was Riley's grandfather. Buford passed away in 2010, but he was famous in their small town for doing something crazy. Buford built a music hall on his country property. The place was well known by the local people. It was called the Golden Saw Music Hall. Buford's music hall was open to anyone in the town who wanted to get up and play music. But if you're imagining the music hall in Buford's backyard to look like a small concert venue, you're in for a shock. According to Riley, his grandfather built the music hall around a tree. So when anyone walked into the hall, the tree was right there. Riley admitted that Buford had a strange way of decorating the music hall. Buford would apparently hang stuffed raccoons in the tree in a hornet's nest. But thankfully, there were no real hornets in it. Riley also got a chance to perform on Buford's stage and entertain the local people. Riley said that he started with cover tunes until one night he made a shocking move. He confessed that he felt bored playing cover tunes that night, so he did something crazy. He performed an original song he had written. And according to Riley, the response was completely unexpected. Riley was shocked when the crowd went nuts. He revealed that he had never had that kind of reaction before. And something unbelievable happened to Riley that night. Riley started to think that he could actually be a songwriter for a living. But shockingly, the original song that Riley performed in the music hall would come back to haunt him. When he was around 20 years old, his dreams of a music career got that much closer to becoming true. Riley won a local talent show, and it came with a huge prize. Country superstar Kenny Chesney was doing a show in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Riley's talent show prize was to open for Kenny in concert. That show was the first big stage that Riley ever appeared on, and it made Riley realize that he wanted to be a country superstar too. But he still waited five long years to head off to Nashville he chose to finish school first. After Riley graduated from Jacksonville State University with a degree in business management, he moved to Nashville in 2013. Riley performed in local bars at night and he tried to become a better songwriter during the day. But even then, it took another five long years for Riley to land a record deal. In 2018, he got signed by the Big Machine label group. So far, Riley's story sounds like many young musicians who got their education and ended up in Nashville. But while many country stars had the same kind of childhood, Riley also went through some crazy things to get where he is today. Some people don't even know what happened to Riley before he got famous in music. And you won't believe this, but Riley did a stint on a reality TV show. And the show was called Redneck Island. If the title kind of sounds like a blue collar survivor, that's a pretty accurate description. Other people describe Redneck Island as a cross between Jersey Shore and Survivor. It was a competition show like Survivor, but the crazy antics and drama of something like Jersey Shore. In 2016, Riley was one of the contestants looking to win a cash prize in the title of Redneck Island Champion. Apparently, the production team at Redneck Island loved Riley's outgoing personality. Unfortunately, Riley got cut early on in his season on Redneck Island. While not everyone remembers that Riley was on a reality show, he actually gained a fan base while he was on Redneck Island. That's crazy, because in a small way, being on the show gave Riley a little bit of exposure. He's also revealed some shocking details about the Redneck Island experience. He admitted that he gained confidence being a contestant on Redneck Island. It made him more focused on his talents and ability. So you could say that a reality show helped Riley land a record deal. But after he got cut from the show, Riley was forced to return to his side gig in Nashville. He had been working construction during the week just to survive. On the weekends, he played bar gigs for spare cash. And sometimes, Riley saved enough to book studio time. He would record some of his original songs and he would post the tunes on many online streaming services. One of the original songs that Riley posted was Bury Me in Dixie. That was the song that he performed in Buford's Music Hall. And even though the local crowd loved Riley's tune, 
after Riley landed his big Nashville record deal, the song landed him in hot water. Bury Me in Dixie was seen as offensive. Rolling Stone even mentioned one shocking line in Riley's song. The line was, I wish Robert E. Lee could come back and take a bow. Riley's song got pulled from streaming services, although the removal was only temporary. It became the first huge controversy in Riley's music career, and he's been forced to address the controversy in interviews. Shockingly, Riley says that his lyrics were not a racial thing, but he understands that singing about the Confederacy and Dixie being a great thing might sound ignorant now. After the song got pulled, Riley said he felt bad about people thinking the song was about something it wasn't. For Riley, the lyrics were just about his hometown pride, but he also understood that people from outside of Alabama might not get that. Riley even made a shocking confession about why the song got pulled from streaming services. He claimed that the sound quality on the track was so horrible that Riley decided to remove the song himself. Shockingly, Riley also made a decision about performing the song live. He said that he wasn't here to offend anybody, but Riley thought that he should be allowed to perform Bury Me and Dixie live in concert. He said that he knows what the song means, and apparently he's ready to explain the lyrics to anyone who thinks he wrote the lyrics to be offensive. Riley does have other songs that aren't controversial. He's co-written and recorded a song with Luke Combs, and Sam Hunt is a good friend of Riley's. Riley is proud of where he came from, and he's proud of where he's going. What do you guys think? Are you a Riley Green fan? Have you heard his controversial music? Do you agree with Riley's point of view?